Welcome back, Guardians. Today, I want to talk about Ido. Ido has increasingly placed itself in dangerous situations this season, whether that is investigating the relics of Nezarek or instigating meetings with Eremis. This entire season, I've got the impression that Ido's naivety is going to put her in a situation where she is seriously injured or possibly worse. Of course, part of the reason we are made to feel this way is because Mithrax is being a very protective dad and trying to shield her away from danger. Week 7 of Season of Plunder continues the theme with the lore entry describing how Ido is planning to pursue a relic of Nezarek by herself. Seems very dangerous and I'm sure Mithrax will not approve. My prediction, or possibly my hope, is that Ido will be taken out, but will be revived as a guardian and as the Kel of Kells, therefore fulfilling the ancient Elixni prophecy. So in this video, I don't want to just talk about how Ido might die, but rather I want to also focus on the House of Rain, Kel of Kells prophecy. I know that Bife also has a Kel of Kells lore video. I will link that down below. I haven't watched it and I typically don't watch other lore videos because it's really hard to write scripts once you have heard another theory. But before we start, here's a quick message from today's sponsor. Getting bagged in Destiny can be a frustrating experience, but fear not, I have for you the ultimate rebuttal. Send them a link to Manscaped and tell them to sort out your cabals because you haven't touched grass in months and things are beginning to look like a derelict leviathan down there. And let's be honest, it's not just Destiny PvP that needs a bit of a cleanup. We could all do with a good clean out of the Temple of Scrota. Manscaped has you covered with the perfect package 4.0. The lawnmower has been buffed to lawnmower 4.0 with the exotic perks of cordless, waterproof, and advanced skin safe, ensuring there is no friendly fire on all those sensitive regions. The lawnmower 4.0 can be stowed in the wireless charging dock with the LED lights showing you how much juice is left. Tapping the button on the front three times enables travel lock. Just remember, before you hop into your Guardian armor for the day, put on some Crop Preserver Ball deodorant. And after any hard crucible matches, use the Crop Reviver to freshen up. Don't let your ghost do all the reviving. Guardians might be immortal, but that doesn't mean you have to be boring. Manscaped will provide you with this disposable shaving mat with some recommended hair designs. This video is brought to you by Manscaped, the flawless provider of men's grooming and hygiene products. Click the link in the description and use promo code MYLAN at the checkout to get 20% off, free shipping, and two free gifts. The travel bag and the anti-chafe boxer briefs. The gifts are actually really good. And with that, let's begin this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let's start at the very core of this theory. What is the Kel of Kells prophecy? There are three main pieces of this prophecy that were introduced during the Destiny 1 expansion, House of Wolves. The prophecy lines were hidden within three separate items slash quest steps. I have a theory on the order that these prophecies should be read in, which I'll cover later when I speak about Ido. But for the moment, have a listen to the Kel of Kells prophecies. What Whirlwind whisked away will be rewrought, and every Kel and Ketch will kneel to the Kel of Kells. Prophecy, House of Rain. Before him, foes will flee or fall, but he will heal the houses, make them whole. Prophecy, House of Rain. The great machine will marvel, moved by might, and come to crown him Kel of Kells. Prophecy, House of Rain. The three prophecy statements I just read have three distinct aspects. The first was that all other Kells would bend the knee, i.e. accept the Kell of Kells as the true leader of the Elixni. The second was the houses would be made whole again, i.e. unification. And lastly, the Kell of Kells would be crowned by the Great Machine, the Traveler. Now this last statement is really interesting because it definitely could be interpreted as the Traveler will bless the Kell of Kells with the light. Now, before we move on to how Ido may fit into this prophecy, I want to talk a little bit more about the prophecy itself and its origin. This is going to seem a little left field, but I promise I will link it all back together. The prophecies are said to have originated from House of Rain, with Varix retaining the prophecies after the Whirlwind. The Whirlwind being the Elixni's collapse when the Pyramid Fleet attacked their home and the Traveler left them. 
All members of House of Rain were said to be lost in the Whirlwind. Have a listen to the Kell of Kells Grimoire card. House Rain lost in Whirlwind. No survivors. But I keep their prophecies. You think many claim to be Kell of Kells, but none have. House Judgment closest thing to peace the Fallen ever know. Now this sequence of events may sound confusing, and it is, because one of the prophecy lines I read before referenced the Whirlwind, and if House of Rain were wiped out by the Whirlwind, how could they reference it? They're all dead. The obvious answer is, well, that's why it's a prophecy, Matt. House of Rain must have also predicted the Whirlwind, the Elixir's collapse. That being said, there is also another alternative answer. Some of the members of House of Rain did actually survive. In Destiny 2, we actually have at least three references of House of Rain, two of which involve Saint 14. And to be honest, it is possible that Saint 14 was the one to wipe out the remaining members of House of Rain. But the main point is this Varix was mistaken. Some of House of Rain survived the whirlwind and did make it to our system. So you could argue that House of Rain made prophecies after the whirlwind. In my mind, if prophecies were written after the whirlwind, they have less legitimacy. Of course, the opposite is true. If they were written before the whirlwind, they have more legitimacy because they actually predicted the whirlwind, which eventually happened. That being said, there also could be a mix with some prophecies written before and some written after. Now, there is a really interesting piece of lore from the Destiny Grimoire Anthology Volume 2 that may prove that the House of Rain prophecies actually came from divine communication with the Traveler before the Whirlwind, which would be huge. Now, I can provide a little backstory on the Grimoire Anthologies. For those who don't know, I actually worked with Bungie on Volumes 1, 2, and 3 of the Destiny Grimoire Anthology. My role was to curate the books, basically suggesting what Grimoire cards and lore entries should go into what books. But what also happened was the narrative team wrote brand new lore entries to connect chapters, or to introduce certain chapters. I did not have access to any of that information, it was added after my drafts. So yeah, I also had to read the books along with everyone else to see what new lore had been added. Now, there was a very interesting piece of Elixney lore added in Volume 2, page 21. The entry is called Rees, Dreams of Alpha Lupi. Let me read it to you. This world is rich with family. You pause to rest. Life is a balm. You must cherish it where you find it. You do not mean to stay but longing and kinship forestalls your departure time and time again. These little gardeners are such careful stewards of fragility. They sing songs of disasters averted and loved ones lost. They fashion heavy elements combed from the bones of old stars into objects of peace and beauty. You must force yourself to be cruel. Your presence is portent. The title of this entry referenced Dreams of Alpha Lupi. And for those familiar with Destiny's lore, dreams of Alpha Lupi are associated with dreams of the Traveler, like someone dreaming from the Traveler's perspective. And so this entry basically says that the Traveler has cherished its time with the Elixni and delayed its departure from the Elixni because of kinship, because of friendship. It also says that the Traveler must be cruel and leave because the Traveler's presence is portent which is a sign or a warning before a calamitous event. In my opinion, this single law entry shows that the Traveler predicted the whirlwind. It knew that it was endangering the Elixni by staying. But more importantly, because the entry is entitled Dreams of Alpha Lupi, it implies a connection between the Elixni and the Traveler, as in one of the Elixni had this dream. The speakers of our age had that connection with the Traveler. They interpreted the Traveler's voice through dreams. And so what I'm suggesting is, there were speaker like Elixni who had dreams of Alpha Lupi, who had this connection with the Traveler. And this is how they created the House of Rain prophecies. They were created from the dreams of Alpha Lupi. Further supporting this theory is the Star Eater Scales lore tab where two Elixni are disagreeing about the truth of the prophecies. And they actually reference and imply that the prophecies came from a dream. The Star Eater Scales reads, Raxel continued his thought. The only unity down this path is collective death. The Kell of Kells is destined to rule only the House of Silence. Ekris clicked his jaw angrily. 
Why would Elixni dream of this Kel if the dream only harm us? Maybe we didn't, Raxel said with a devilish grin. Maybe something else dreamt it for us to keep us apart. On an interesting side note, this law entry could potentially be used as evidence for the opposite, that the prophecy came from the witness or another ill-intentioned entity that wanted to keep the elixir divided. Regardless, you have to admit, the prophecy of Kell of Kells coming from the Traveler itself provides a really cool narrative arc for the elixir. The Traveler predicts the whirlwind, the calamitous event to take out the elixir. The Traveler knows it needs to leave, so the Traveler gives the Elixni a prophecy of how to recover, how they need a new leader to unite the Elixni houses, a Kell of Kells. And when that happens, the Traveler will bless the Kell of Kells with the light. As the prophecy says, the great machine will marvel, moved by might, and come to crown him Kell of Kells. Okay, so let's go with the exciting theory that the Traveler created the prophecy, passed it to the House of Rain, and now we are waiting for the Kell of Kells to be crowned and likely blessed in the light. How does this relate to Ido? Also note that the prophecy says he, not she, but I really think that this is just an interpretation of whoever wrote the prophecy, as they obviously don't know who the Kell of Kells is. One of the prophecy lines was to heal all the houses, and this is what Ida has been trying to do this season. She has had a very open communication with Eremus, to the point where Eremus actually respects Ido. Even though Eremus says, don't get in my way, there is respect between the two. And the fact that Ido has been able to open up this communication with Eremus is actually quite impressive. Further, the law entry from week 7 ends with Ido wanting to seek a Nezarek relic herself, alone. But her motivations are to not seek power, but to seek unity of the Elixni, by convincing Aramis that there is a future. Have a listen to the law entry, it reads, Aramis had said she could not turn away from her violence or her vengeance. Ido did not believe that. She could not believe it. This violence was not the Kel spirit. Ido had to find the part of Eremus that did not rage at the past. Ido had to show the Kell of Darkness a future. Silently, the scribe of House Light began piecing together the coordinates to the next hideout herself. Now, apart from this sounding obviously dangerous, why do I think this could lead to Ido's death? Well, Ido quoted the speaker earlier this season. Specifically, she used the quote about how guardians are chosen. Have a listen. As the Guardian Credo states, devotion inspires bravery, bravery inspires sacrifice. The unspoken line that follows is why I will remain on the radio. Of course, the end of that sentence is sacrifice leads to death. And guess what? Ido is no longer just on the radio. She's going into the field. She's tracking down a relic. If Ida was to die and be resurrected, this would link very nicely with Sabathun's two truths, two lies. The Hive are not the last race chosen by the light. Okay, so here's my prediction for how Ida will become the Kell of Kells and how it suits the prophecy. This is my order for the prophecies. 1. Before him, foes will flee or fall, but he will heal the houses, make them whole. Prophecy, House of Rain. This is Ido uniting the houses, specifically her father Mithrax from the House of Light and Eremus the House of Salvation. I don't think anyone is fleeing right now before Ido, but maybe they will flee when Ido picks up the Nezarek relic next week? Question mark? Then I think something will go wrong after Ido picks up the Nezarek relic, leading to her death. This will trigger prophecy number two and her resurrection. The great machine will marvel, moved by might, and come to crown him Kell of Kells. Prophecy, House of Rain. As now the first ever Guardian Elixni, Prophecy 3 will be triggered. What whirlwind whisked away will be rewrought, and every Kell and Ketch will kneel to the Kell of Kells. Prophecy, House of Rain. Pretty cool. Look, if this doesn't happen, I feel like it should. This gets me excited. <laughs> and with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, leave the word Ido, Kell of Kells. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.